thanks for joining us. This is ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. Sports are an integral part of lives of our young people. It also provides an incredible infrastructure to teaching some of life's most important le lessons to young people. My two guests today are Jeannie Garcia and Gary Peters Meyer, two very dedicated individuals from the uh, Positive Coaching Alliance, a national nonprofit organization that attempts to transform the culture of youth sports so that young athletes can have a positive character building experience. Jeannie's career revolves around sports and her love for sports. She is currently the Executive Director of PCA or P um, Positive Coaching Alliance of Hawaii. Prior to that, she was also the Athletic Director at Punahou School. She's also recognized as a Certified Master Athletic Administrator or CMAA. She's one of only three of these uh, CMAA or Certified Master Athletic Administrator in the state of Hawaii, and less than 200 of them in the entire um, U.S. mainland. This designation means that she has attained high standards of proficiency in athletic administration as demonstrated by substantial experience and superior examination performance. My second guest is Gary, um, Gary Peters Meyer. He is the chairperson of the National Board of PCA or Positive Coaching Alliance, an experienced medical device and pharmaceutical industry executive with more than 35 years of experience and expertise in the US, Asia, and the Europe market, uh, European markets. Currently, he is a consultant and mentor to some of the executives in a number of public and private companies. Prior to that, he had served as executive at uh, Aesthetic Science Corporation, Collagen Corporation, and Syntex Pharmaceuticals. Currently, he is on the boards of the Co uh, Cooper Companies, which is a global medical device manufacturer, and Omnicell Corporation, which is a provider of automated solutions for hospital medication and supply management. Well, this is a long introduction, but welcome to the two of you, Jeannie you. and Gary. Thank it's you, great to have two of you as my very distinguished guests from PCA. Now, um, before we talk about Positive Coaching Alliance, let me start off by showing um, a video clip that will give us some number to support why it is so important um, to show how important your work is. Okay, producer, can you roll the uh, video clip on how what sports do for you? When you have a coach who fills a kid's emotional tank, notices the good things they're doing and recognizes them for that, then you have kids who can't wait to come to practice. They can't wait to work hard and they can't wait to have a challenging game where they can show what they've learned. Positive Coaching Alliance is a nonprofit with the mission to create a movement to use high school and youth sports to develop better athletes, better people. There's a lot known about how to get the best out of kids from sports psychology research and the practices of best coaches. What Positive Coaching Alliance does is we refine those tools to change the culture of youth sports so that every kid can have a positive character building experience with sports. PCA's concept of youth sports as a development zone means different roles for coaches, athletes, and parents. Coaches are double goal coaches. First goal is winning, second more important goal, using sports to teach life lessons. Athletes are triple impact competitors. They make themselves better, their teammates better, and the game better by the way they compete. And parents are second goal parents. They leave the first goal, the scoreboard goal, to the coaches and the kids, and they focus on the life lessons goal. We do live workshops. We did 1,500 workshops last year across the country. We do online workshops. We had 50,000 coaches go through our online workshops. Last year, for the first time, we reached more than a million kids through our workshops. And there are 40 million kids any given year playing high school and youth sports. It's an incredible opportunity to build better athletes, better people, and produce the ethical leaders and the positive contributors our society so desperately needs. Local. Okay, Jimmy and Gary. Now, um, the short video clip was showing some of the work that PCA does. So, would you like to comment on that? And I guess perhaps first of all, um, what are some of the issues that young athletes are having to cope with? 
I think the biggest issue in sports today is that we are in a WAC world. WAC is an acronym. Mm -hmm. It stands for win at all costs. And it's, it's a pervasive culture. Unless you have a concerted effort to put WAC out of the system, that will, it will always permeate. And the reason that happens is because we have this model of college and professional sports, which is a model of business and entertainment mm -hmm. and money. And we're trying to transpose that culture into a youth sports culture. And the research has shown that that just doesn't work. And so there are issues involved when we don't have an educational mindset when we are approaching youth sports. Gary, do you want to add to well, that? Well, uh, Jim Thompson, who mm -hmm. is our founder and really started PCA, uh, was a teacher years ago of children that had some severe learning challenges. And his mentor said, Jim, just constantly reinforce them with positive things, positivity. And he was incredibly successful. Years later, his son Gabriel was playing Little League, mm -hmm. was so disappointed, he buried his glove in the backyard. And Jim thought, why is my 10 or 11-year-old son so unhappy? And it dawned on him, there are some things that he learned in his life that can be instilled in today's athletes to really change the win at all costs to win, but also learn some lessons and make it much more exciting and enjoyable for the children. That's a pertinent story about that little kid burying the, the sports uh, the glove. Said the glove. Yeah. Um, maybe I can, as a producer, to show some numbers. Um, to see, uh, you talk about trying to instill positivity in, in sports experience, but very often it doesn't happen. So let's take a look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. Producer, can you roll this first video on what, sport, uh, what can sports do for you? We've all seen it. Coaches humiliating their players. Parents berating the officials and conflicts between coaches and parents. The result, 70% of youth athletes drop out of sports by age 13. Are these the examples we want to set for our children? Sports provide an incredible opportunity for our nation's youth to learn valuable life lessons that will set them up for success as adults. Leadership, teamwork, resilience, self-confidence, and more. Youth athletes will only develop these skills if they have coaches and parents who seize these teachable moments. PCA is working with organizations and schools across the country to create a development zone, a place where leaders, coaches, parents, and athletes are focused on developing better athletes, better people. Not everyone has the opportunity to coach a team, but everyone can have an impact on youth sports. Support PCA today. Donate.positivecoach.org. The numbers are astounding. 70% of 13-year-old drop, 70% uh, of kids drop out when uh, drop out of a type of sport when they are 13 years old or when they reach 13. They do. The statistics are staggering, and, mm -hmm. and Jim's son Gabriel was a statistic. Uh, he got to a point where it just wasn't fun anymore. And that's the number one factor for kids playing and staying in sports. And when that's eliminated, uh, they'll drop out. And uh, tons of research to, uh, to support those numbers. We would like to change that. Hmm. Now, maybe tying it back to the first video that, wa that we watched, and I know that um, before we came into the interview, you mentioned that Positive Coaching Alliance has been here in Hawaii for the last 10 years. So. Maybe, first of all, tell us what you do in terms of the training, which is probably similar to what we saw at the beginning of the, uh, of the interview. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we go into an organization mm -hmm. and we provide workshop training. And so just yesterday, we were at Kalani High School, and Billy Piper, one of, uh, one of our trainers, we have a number of just amazing people who are on the front lines delivering the message. Billy Piper, you know, uh, ex athlete extraordinaire, oh. and played for the Kansas City Royals, played at a very high level. Uh, he, he led uh, 125 boys, uh, student athletes, mm -hmm. in a workshop where they learn three things. And in the student athlete workshop, we talk about how you can make yourself better, we talk about how you can make your teammates better, and we talk about how you can make the game better. 
And while Billy was doing that, I was working with the girls. I had almost 100 girls. Okay. Uh, so we were reaching all of the student athletes in the winter season. Uh -huh. And then that night, we had workshops for the parents and the coaches. Mm -hmm. And again, we had our, you know, we had we have top-notch trainers. Mike Town uh, and I led the parent workshops, mm -hmm. and we talked about, you know, philosophy. But we mainly went into the toolbox, mm -hmm. which is what we do with parents and coaches, adults in general. We mm -hmm. go into a toolbox mm -hmm. to really reinforce the message. Interesting. Now you said that Billy was doing a co uh, coaching or workshop with the boys. So do you usually do this, uh, the girls and boys separately? Whatever the organization wants. Mm -hmm. This particular organization mm -hmm. wanted to separate because uh, we had there were so many student athletes, mm -hmm. and they thought, well, why don't we have have them split? Mm -hmm. Have about 100 girls, 125 boys, mm -hmm. and in fact, that that was rather large, mm -hmm. a large number. Mm -hmm. It worked out really well, though. Okay. Um, other organizations want all of their athletes. Together, so we did a workshop from McKinley High School oh, where okay. we worked with all of their captains, okay. about 50 student athletes, boys and girls, and that worked out really well too. It's it's whatever the organization, the school would like. So, how long have you been working with Kalani High School or some of the public schools? Then I presume we we have been doing a lot of work mm -hmm. uh, with the sportsmanship initiative, and so Chris Chun uh, has been visionary in thinking about how to tackle. Sportsmanship, and so we've come up with the sportsmanship initiative. So Chris has hired me as the sportsmanship liaison okay. to every school in Hawaii. Okay. And so what we do now is we go out and we do the workshop training at every school. Now not every school actually can afford the training, yeah. and so what we've done is that we have reached out to people and we have gotten some great third-party funding from uh, people like the uh, QLCC, the Queen Lily of Kalani Children's oh, Center. Wow. Mm -hmm. They have been completely supportive of our initiative. And so they have actually funded mm -hmm. every school on the windward side of the island. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and I might add, uh, having come here for many years, mm -hmm. uh, the trainers that we have in Hawaii, Mike Town and Kia Pimental and Jeannie, might be the best group of trainers we have anywhere in any of our chapters. Uh, Wherever we go, we find individuals who have coached at a very high level, have uh -huh. competed at a high level, have won, but know there's more to coaching than just winning. Um, so we really have experts, and I think the insight that Jim had after kind of uh, the idea of positivity is to find great leaders who are great speakers. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, Kia had 400 mm -hmm. high schoolers in Kailua at the high school for two and a half hours and then a hundred afterwards. I was just there to try to help him um, stay, um, keep the kids quiet a little bit. But uh, they really do have a fabulous group of trainers here you know, in the islands. Yeah, the, well, definitely the people that we have are, are amazing. And so I like to talk a little bit more about the type of trainers. Gary, you mentioned that these are excellent trainers. So I'd like to find out a little bit more about the type of trainers you are looking for. But we're coming on our first break, so hold your thoughts and we'll come back to that question. My guests are Jeannie Garcia, Executive Director of the Positive Coaching Alliance, and Gary Petersmeyer, the Board of the National Chair of PCA. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel, CEO of ThinkTech. On Thursday, December 11th, we're having our annual reunion party. We call it Think Tech United. It's at the Laniakea YWCA. Uh, it's for our speakers and hosts and moderators and friends. Uh, please come down. Everybody is invited to be united. We'll see you there. Check our website for details. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kelee Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. One of the things I love being, however, is the host of the weekly program on Think Tech Hawaii called Ehana Kako, which means let's work together. I get to interview movers and shakers in our town and across the world so that you and I together can learn and to grow. Please join me every Monday from 2 to 3 p.m. or watch us on the recording www.thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha and ehana kako. Let's work together. Welcome back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. If you're just joining us, my guests are Gary Petersmeyer, the board of the, Nas uh, board of the national um, chair of the P 
Positive Coaching Alliance, and Jeannie Garcia, the Executive Director of PCA here in Hawaii. Um, Gary, I want to go back to your point about the very special qualities that you look for in trainers. Would you like to elaborate sure. on that? Sure. Um, I was, got involved with PCA 15 years ago uh, when I first met Jim. And he was um, bringing trainers on, and they learned they not only needed trainers who had been successful, but were good in front of groups that had great speaking skills. So they actually, PCA goes through a screening process to try to find those actually audition that have the skills to present and sometimes debate because there are people who don't fully get PCA at first and need to have a dialogue. So I think we're proud of the fact that not only great coaches, but they are great presenters. Well, that's why I guess you have your CMAA designation. Exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> one, of our, I, one of our really good trainers. Uh, one of I, don't, the best. I don't know about that, but uh, that's how I got started with PCA, because oh, okay. I became a trainer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in fact, uh, Jim got to a point where he wanted to expand mm -hmm. out of the Stanford office, because we were based originally at Stanford University. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me to uh, run the LA office, which I did for five years. And we learned a lot of what not to do, in fact. Uh, but the training part uh, I've been doing uh, since the beginning, and it, it really is a highlight for me. But I'm, I'm so proud of the kind of people that we have been able to uh, get here in Hawaii because there is a, a standard of excellence. Mm -hmm. It's not anyone that can do this kind of training. And so we have people like Kiha Pimentel. Uh, he's, you know, he's a minister, okay. and he is able to speak to large groups, small groups, in an authentic and genuine way. He played uh, football at a high level for Stanford University. And, wow. you know, he's amazing. We have Kaoki Frazier. He played for the Miami Dolphins. Mm -hmm. uh, his wife, uh, Jana, uh, played uh, softball for Arizona. I mean, we have um, so many people. John, uh, John Walker, also played at a high level. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, administrators who are mentors to me, like mm -hmm. Kiki Morioko. Okay. And he's, mm -hmm. yes, he's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, he's on the Big Island. Mm -hmm. um, and I could go on and on about the trainers, but they are our front line uh, well, delivering the message. But of course, I missed at the beginning that you yourself um, have competed in basketball, um, cross country, and marathon, some of them in Europe, U.S., Boston, and Asia. Boston Marathon. Oh, Boston Marathon. <laughs> yes. So you, you are very um, accomplished as well. You're very uh, uh, nice to uh, say that, but I, sports are my life, and I just love sports. And I now want to give back uh, because sports is uh, such a great vehicle mm -hmm. for, I think, uh, especially student athletes, mm -hmm. to learn the kinds of life lessons mm -hmm. that can only be you know, brought forth in this sort of competitive uh, winning environment. And you know, we want kids to walk away with the idea that they can persevere, mm -hmm. that they can struggle. Mm -hmm. and, and continue to work hard, mm -hmm. you know, and to learn the values of teamwork. And, you know, that's, that's what we want to emphasize in all of our workshops. So, uh, going back to that point, now you've run some training sessions at Kalani yesterday. Mm -hmm. So what are the feedback you get from, from student athletes, from teachers, from Good coaches, question. and parents? It's a great question. So we do immediate mm -hmm. evaluation right after every workshop. And I've been compiling all of the data. Mm -hmm. The data has been overwhelmingly positive. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I was just looking at the, the, uh, the evaluations from last night, and the parents were like, this needs to be at every high school in wow. the state. Why aren't there more people who understand how to support kids? This information needs to be out there. You know, and you know, I can share with you uh, the, uh, the evaluations that we've received mm -hmm. so far, but they have been unbelievably uh, positive uh, from, from everybody, coaches, parents, leaders, student athletes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we've had some amazing byproducts. Mm -hmm. Parents come to our workshops, mm -hmm. and sometimes there are surprising connections that oh. those parents make for us, like, like to that. Nike. For instance, a parent, uh, one of the executives of Nike, uh, um, we have a great penetration of Major League Baseball because sometimes we'll get a parent who's involved with a Major League team. And so just the, the, the network grows in ways beyond just the training of parents because the parents care about spreading our word and getting involved um, wherever they can. Mm -hmm. 
Now, um, earlier on, we mentioned that you've been here, the organization has been here for 10 years. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to be done, and you always get positive feedback. So, um, how else can the community support your work? Well, we have a couple of events coming up okay. uh, that uh, we would uh, love to promote. Uh -huh. uh, one of them is uh, the Breakfast with Champions. Ah, um, maybe I can get the producer to show that brochure. Uh, could you show that mm -hmm. brochure or that one-page flyer for us? Thank you. Oh. Um, Jeannie, would you like to comment on that? What is this Breakfast with Champions on December 12th? Well, this is our inaugural event, mm -hmm. and we finally were able to uh, have a student athlete scholarship uh, program and we're featuring our triple impact competitor scholarship winners in fact. Yes, Could it's a you mouthful. That? Because the triple <laughs> impact is about the three things that we talked about. Making yourself better, making your teammates better, and making the game better. That's triple impact. Wow. Okay. Right. So we have triple impact competitors and we are going to recognize these student athletes uh, at this uh, at this event. And we were so excited when the Hawaii Bull Foundation and Alexander and Baldwin both stepped up to provide scholarships for our winners, $1,000, $1,000 for each of our winners. Wow. So we will be featuring those student athletes. We and also have yeah. these. Yeah, can you talk about those four, uh, four features? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Jacqueline Hampton uh, is a uh, marathoner, runner extraordinaire. In fact, she was just recognized two days ago uh, by Competitor Magazine as the number three greatest marathoner of all time. She was, she's a trailblazer, uh, and uh, uh, what she talks about as far as you know, running and how it got her to a certain point, and now she is actually a professor at Loyola Marymount University in the, um, in the health education department. Mm -hmm. And she was, uh, you know, we have to promote the Honolulu Marathon because right. it is that weekend of this event. Ah, okay. And so Jacqueline was a former mm -hmm. winner. She's a former Boston winner, mm -hmm. world record holder. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have June Jones coming back oh, to join us. Really? Yeah, very wow. exciting uh -huh. uh, for him to be with us. Uh -huh. He is uh, on our national advisory board and just a class act. Uh, and character and values driven man mm -hmm. and so we're excited to have him mm -hmm. and then the the story of the Kemo Eatu brothers mm -hmm. has been internationally recognized most recently on Ellen DeGeneres so Ellen featured them on their show oh, wow. and the NFL needs role models like this because Chris uh, uh, got kidney disease his older brother stepped in and dropped out of the NFL to give his brother his kidney. These are Super Bowl champions, and the life lessons that they have learned from being at the highest level of sport will be shared at this event. And then Kanoha Lehi, who is just um, uh, you know, a beloved sportscaster here in Hawaii, will be moderating our whole event. And we want, uh, we want people to come to this. We actually are almost sold out. We only have oh. four tables left. Oh my and gosh. so if you are interested in uh, being uh, a part of this spectacular event, mm -hmm. we'd love for you to come. And, and how old are the uh, individual athletes that are going to be recognized? High school. And how many oh. will be there? Four athletes, uh -huh. and they're all, uh, they're all uh, uh, beginning their senior year this year. So is this the first time that you're having this Breakfast with this Champions? Is, yes. Oh. Uh, first time we're mm -hmm. doing this Breakfast with mm -hmm. Champions, mm -hmm. and it's an inaugural event. And we're just really excited about it. Want to promote it? Like I said, uh, we've we've gotten a lot of great feedback about it already. Almost sold out. Mm -hmm. Only four tables left at the Pacific Club mm -hmm. on Friday, December 12th. Oh, and, and and we're doing this on a national basis. So there's probably ten or so of these going on a year. And the pattern is really pretty interesting. The high schoolers and the famous athletes have a lot in common of what they've learned from sports, and uh, just having them speak extemporaneously, just without scripts, is really a remarkable thing to hear. And uh, whether it's Bruce Bochy that spoke recently or, or Steve Young, just on a national basis, these things are, are kind of grassroots. And by national, I mean at the location around the country. It's really a local thing. Mm -hmm. um, that we just are lucky enough to have 11 chapters throughout the country, and someday we think with some certainty we'll have 25. 
Oh, that's fantastic. And it's amazing that um, you have these, uh, these excellent uh, athletes. And I hope that by getting these awards, then they go back to school and help coach you, or mentor. You might explain why they, they're seniors and not after they graduate. Oh, right, because we want them to go back and to share the experience mm -hmm. and to be able to impart the lessons that they have learned to others. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's our, that's our, they're our biggest, you know, teaching model, mm -hmm. you know, are the kids, really. Uh, but this event wouldn't be possible, really, without the backing of the PCA Hawaii board. Okay. So we have mm -hmm. 17 board members. Mm -hmm. And it's, we've never had so many board members before. Tell us something about this board of yours then. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> we have the most passionate and dedicated people uh, in Hawaii, mm -hmm. I believe, mm -hmm. that are working with PCA Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And our uh, co-chairs of, uh, of this event, uh, Bridget Egbert mm -hmm. and Dr. Elizabeth Ignacio, okay. uh, they have uh, been leaders in making sure we have an event uh, like this to be able to, you know, showcase what we're doing because this is one of the ways that we're trying to get the word out about us. Um, another thing that, though, has been instrumental in us moving forward is, uh, is the seed funding that mm. we've been able to receive. And mm. so the, uh, the Wong Family Foundation stepped up and gave us, you know, a huge amount of money, which was uh, so heartwarming because they believed in us so much. Mm. And then right behind them, we had the Honolulu Marathon Foundation. Uh, uh, come and support us. And then, you know, we had the, the Harold K. L. Castle Foundation come in to mm -hmm. support us. And then, uh, you know, we had, then we had individual people, Scott and Celeste Chapman. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we've had this amazing financial base mm -hmm. that has now led us to having a board that is thriving, to, uh, to our national board chair just really supporting us, and then having our inaugural event. And mm -hmm. so all of these things have now combined uh, so that we can promote PCA even more. Jeannie, you are so passionate about your work. It's just, <laughs> it's infectious. <laughs> and you talk about all these um, events, these successes, but there's also a lot of work behind it. Mm -hmm. Now, we're coming on our second break, but um, after the break, I'd like to ask you some of the challenges. And you know, you, you have to make connections, you have to network with, um, obviously the community. So what does it take? And um, so we will talk more about this after our second break. <laughs> My guests are Gary Peters Meyer, the chair of national board of the Positive Coaching Alliance and Jeannie Garcia, executive director of PCA here in Hawaii. We'll be right back after a short break. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I host a show called Healthcare in Hawaii here on ThinkTech. We get together once a week or sometimes uh, twice a month, depends when we're busy, we get together less often, but we love to see you here to talk about the preeminent health care issues in our state. Our programs vary very widely. We talk about economics, we talk about health care, we talk about social issues on this program. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. This is Alice Lee Hagen. My guests are Jeannie Garcia and Gary Peters Meyer of the Positive Coaching Alliance. Before the break, we were talking about some of the um, significant, uh, significant event, which is the Breakfast with Champions that's coming up in December 12th to honor four senior athletes here in Hawaii. Um, now, Jeannie, before the break, you talked about all these successes, your connections with local businesses and nonprofits, but that's a lot of work. So tell us about your daily routine and perhaps some of the challenges uh, in your position as the executive director here? Well, I like to think of challenges as opportunities, don't I, Gary? You do. <laughs> so I'll let you talk about challenges a little bit, and then I can talk, uh, I can piggyback off you and talk about the opportunities. So what we've learned mm -hmm. um, over the last 10 years is that we want a chapter that's thriving. It needs local business leaders, community leaders, education leaders supporting PCA both financially and with their network and by, as Jeannie said, getting seed funding. We try to raise a significant amount of money, $400,000, in order to launch a chapter. So the seed funding for your chapter would be from Hawaii, or is it a little yes. bit from, oh. No, it's from, it's from oh, local. We, okay. We've learned that the community, the mm -hmm. parents and the leaders in each community are essential to growth and to sustaining. Um, so once we have the seed funding and we have 15 
community leaders, then we hire an executive director and then a partnership manager to go find the schools, uh, the leagues that need our training. And then we sell workshops. And usually about 30 or 35 percent of our income is from those workshops. And the other 65 percent are usually from parents and individuals and foundations that want to support PCA and make sure that it thrives. And in order to thrive, we need to bring in more money than we spend. Right. Uh, we're not, you know, a for-profit. We're a not-for-profit. Mm -hmm. So we want to have our expenses covered by all of the income. And that's why we need a strong local chapter. We need leadership uh, like Jeannie. Mm -hmm. And we need these events and the um, trainings going on throughout the, the, the state. And that's the way we've, we've been able to grow PCA, and now we're in a number of cities throughout the country, and we think, as I said earlier, we'll be in 25 in the next few years. That's amazing. You talk about the financial basis. So how does your um, organization, how does PCA compare to other nonprofits in terms of um, their financial strengths, um, the, the funding that come from donors? Yeah, well, first of all, it's exciting that for 16 years, 90% uh, of the time, we've had a surplus, but we turn exactly. all of that back into the uh, communities. Um, what was your, what was the second part of your question? Um, how does that compare with oh, the other nonprofits? Um, well, first of all, I think it's good to make money every year, and of there course. are nonprofits that aren't doing so well. Um, I think 30 or 35 percent that comes from sold activity is somewhat unique. Yes, if you think mm -hmm. of of uh, most nonprofits, it's all donations. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we've learned. And on a national basis, the same math is at work. About 30 or 35 percent are workshops around the country, and about 65 percent are from individuals, mm -hmm. foundations, professional teams that just want to support locally. But we do have um, uh, some generous um, supporters who will give us money that's just for the national organization. Mm -hmm. So we have a uh, Jim has a very uh, competent staff in Mountain View, California, right by Stanford, okay. that is part of the uh, of the organization. So to use a social lingo, uh, so it, your organization is almost like a social enterprise. You have a mission, you try to make some money, but you plow it back it's into the totally organization. Totally mission. You know, our mission is to change mm -hmm. sports for kids. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you can tell I've been around a while. It used to be sports was on the playground. When you were eight years old or six years old, you played with the big kids, and you were taught basically by playing. The world's evolved, um, and you used the term earlier, the helicopter parent. The world's evolved where we're so intent on our kids, which is only natural, but it's spilled into the playing fields, and, and schools are less involved. The teachers are less involved than you were a generation ago. So our mission is to kind of bring that back and make the athletes achieve all they can, but not just win. You know, learn some lessons so that when they struggle, when they have obstacles, they know that effort and getting through it is as important as, as winning. Yeah, um, th that's probably a whole different discussion we could have because <laughs> I was going to ask you, is it possible to revert back to kids, old, like older generation kids, they learn from playing in the pay playground? and the parents are kind of standoffish, they let the kids learn. Is it a possibility to go back there? That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing now. Our mission is really better athletes, better people. Mm -hmm. And we've, you know, grown so much in the past six months here in Hawaii. We have a number of key partners. I mean, I, you know, a lot of the YSOs that we're working with now are brand new, and they've heard of what we're trying to do, and they want the same thing because they know it works. Mm -hmm. And so we have AAU, you know, Hawaii mm -hmm. as a partner. We have the Amateur Softball Association of Hawaii mm -hmm. as a partner. We have Boys and Girls Club, uh, uh, a partner. We have FC Hawaii. We have Pono Athletics. We have every school in Hawaii, you know, a part of us. Mm -hmm. And again, without people like the McInerney Foundation uh, and the HHSAA uh, who are coming forward and, and helping support our initiatives. 
uh, you is, know. I'm sorry. What is HHSSA? Then? Ah, the Hawaii. Uh, so the, uh, the the high school organization, okay. the national governing body, mm -hmm. is uh, the Hawaii High School Athletics Association. Sorry, okay. I like okay. to throw out acronyms. <laughs> you know, That's like right. like the dreaded PGA, <laughs> which is that tool that we l share with parents. You know, we were just talking about parents, but uh -huh. the dreaded PGA. Uh -huh. You know, we don't want the post-game analysis to happen with parents right after a game. Mm -hmm. And so we go into the toolbox about how, you know, we shape those conversations. Yeah, and, and sports is such a bigger part of our life today than it was. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the big professional um, leagues are, are eight, nine, ten billion dollars of annual revenue. A generation ago it was a fraction of that. Mm -hmm. So just the, the TV, the exposure, the excitement, it's much greater than ever before. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a new time, but I do think that the mission of PCA is to bring balance to that and, and recognize that whether you're an elite athlete or just an athlete having fun, um, there's more to life than just sports, but you can learn some things from sports that carry over to what you're doing outside of sports. Oh, absolutely. And let, uh, if we can stem the tide of 70% of kids quitting sports before they're 13. 70, and they start early quitting, mm -hmm. so it's not, so we, we want to we deal with that in a significant way. Now let's go back to my other question about the challenges. <laughs> Jeannie, you are really dedicated and I, I, I'm really appreciative of the fact that you're doing what you're doing here in Hawaii, but there must be some challenges that you have to deal with. And, well, I know you said you look at it as opportunity, so yes. tell us what they are. <laughs> well, I think our biggest challenge is that we're growing at such a rate mm. uh, that uh, having, uh, having a small staff is, is going to be more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I'm, looking that, I'm looking at that as an opportunity to be able to hire more people uh, in the future. Uh, which is on the table for sure, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, with uh, the number of partners and the number of partnerships and uh, the, just the, everything that we're doing right now, uh, it's, it, it's a lot uh, for just a few people to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that's our, our biggest challenge, okay. but at the same time, uh, we're making that challenge grow into an opportunity, uh, and it's, it's, it's so exciting. Well, and Jeannie's able um, to balance all of this work, but also financially balance things, mm -hmm. and that's really important for our executive directors mm -hmm. to be a business person mm -hmm. at the same time that they're a sports leader. Right. And, and right. Um, we know Jeannie is going to be very successful at that, and already is. That's great. Now, um, nonprofit is still running, it's, it's still a business. You still have to run a business, you have bills to pay. Gary, let's come back to you. Um, you are a medical device executive. You serve as consultants, your mentors to a lot of these executives, not exactly tied to coaching and sports. So what make you stay and um, what are some of your, I guess, experiences that you bring to your position? Yeah. So it was quite easy mm -hmm. 15 years ago in um, 1999 when I first met Jim to get involved because I had uh, played college basketball, I had coached high school, I had coached my kids, mm -hmm. and I was kind of troubled by what was happening in youth sports. Oh. And I saw the work that Jim was doing mm -hmm. and I was really interested in that, as is the case for all the board members anywhere, and particularly uh, in uh, the national board. So that's th the foundation. Jim started 15 years ago with a $400,000 grant. And he was trying to figure out how to grow the mission, but also do it in a financially responsible way. And what he learned, and we learned from him and with him, was that parents really cared, and they were willing to support PCA. Um, there was a need for training of athletes, parents, and administrators. Um, and people would pay for that. So what we learned, though, is that at the million dollar level. A third was going to come from uh, workshops and two thirds were going to come from donations. And that the way to responsibly grow that was to do it community by community. So I'm not sure my business experience um, was, was helpful, but this is a different situation um, than pure for-profit business. And I think we all learned uh, to be fiscally responsible. We had to fill a need 
but also tap into basically parents everywhere who mm -hmm. care. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the lifeblood of our financial support are parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether they're modestly uh, able to give us you know, a modest amount of money, or in some cases, very successful people mm -hmm. who are giving us hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that's the, that's the model. It's not a for-profit model. It just happens to be in this day and age. And finally, I'll say, unfortunately, there is a negative event happening somewhere almost every day. And the communities around the country and even outside the country recognize that, and it bothers them. So they turn to PCA both for help but also financially. That is not going to go away, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So the financial, I think if we're careful and prudent, there will be financial support as we grow community by community just because of the solution we provide but also the continued problems that exist. The financial base here in Hawaii mm -hmm. has really been uh, cemented by Chip Hammond. And yes. so Chip Hammond is mm -hmm. the board chair here in Hawaii. Oh, okay. And he has done a phenomenal job of, mm -hmm. of laying the groundwork. I'm sorry, can you tell us a little bit about Chip Hammond then? Yes. Uh, Chip mm -hmm. is, uh, he's probably one of the biggest reasons I, I took this position mm -hmm. because Chip had already laid uh, the groundwork uh, with uh, financially uh, with a lot of folks who were very interested in PCA. Mm -hmm. He's the one, though, that laid all those bricks down and was able to put all those pieces of the puzzle together uh, so that we had a, a very successful financial base. Mm -hmm. And without Chip Hammond, PCA Hawaii would not be and he's, here. He's a perfect example. He's a parent, mm -hmm. he coached, mm -hmm. he has a, a successful business career, he's got a great network, and he brought in like-minded parents mm -hmm. to build PCA. And I, I, I think it's actually more than 10 years wow. since Chip mm -hmm. got involved. It, it's maybe more like 12 years. It was mm -hmm. pretty early in the in the PCA development that Chip and others uh, really got going here. You think I have passion. You should see Chip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess my last question, and it will be a quick response from you. You talk about a lot of the opportunities. So what is one thing that you'll be working on? Well, we want to make sure that people understand that Positive Coaching Alliance is about a standard of excellence and that we want people to win. Uh, we, uh, we want people to understand that we we teach how to perform better, in fact. If you want to win more, if you want to perform better, and if you want to enjoy the experience, uh, the overall experience, and keep kids in sports mm -hmm. the right way, then PCA is the way. And, and it's, it's been supported by so many great people. How could, you know, I look at people and say, how could you not be involved with PCA? I couldn't have said it any better than you just said it to you. And that is a wonderful way to end our show. Thank you so much, Thank Jeannie you, and Thank Gary, you, for coming to my webcast. <laughs> um, I hope that we'll have a chance to chat maybe a year from now. Absolutely, that Alice, anytime. Great. Okay. <laughs> My guests have been Jeannie Garcia, the Executive Director of Positive Coaching Alliance in Hawaii, and Gary Peters Meyer, the Chair of the National Board of PCA. Please join us again next week. Aloha. <laughs>